Hi there, welcome back. Welcome to the channel. And today we have the fourth video in the restoration series for the Grundig 2140. Quite a bit got done. There were quite a few things I wanted to sort out, including a stuck uh, tuning mechanism on the FM. Admittedly, I'm not supposed to be touching that just yet, but because I want to play around or clean up all the uh, mechanical sides, that's the first thing I decided to tackle. And then, of course, as promised, I went into the AM to see what we can get sorted there. Quite a few things were found, and I think you might find it interesting. So if this is your sort of thing, stick around. I've been wondering about this stuck rotor here, and uh, I've decided to figure out what it is that's blocking it. Now, I wanted to redo the, um, the entire uh, dial string, but to, to do that, I need to sort this out first. So what I need to do is to remove this case. And the way to do that, I think, is there's one screw there, there's one screw there, there's one on that side, and I believe there's one from the underside, and then you remove these clips. So I'll start with that. Actually, you can just loosen them. You don't need to remove them because this thing will slide in. Let's try this one here. Now I need to turn this around and get to the one on the other side. There's a hole on the chassis that you can get through. You can hardly see it, but it's that guy over there. Again, I'll just loosen it. I won't remove it. Should be good enough. Now we've got to remove these clips and they have been stuck in with, um, with paint. So let's see if this comes out. Yeah, it's not difficult. There's one. And the other one. Now, Will this come out? You need to do this carefully. And it's out. Good. Now, what can we see? This thing is... It is turning. It is turning. Good. Let me get some oil. In fact, what I'm going to use is a bit of WD-40, and I think it's on there. Just a small amount. Oi, this hurts. This thing is really tight. I don't want to undo that if I can avoid it. Let it soak a bit. Usually it's just the beginning that's tough and then it starts coming off. Oui. This thing is really tight. Well, it's turning, and it's becoming easier. Let's reach the end. Put a bit of oil in there, machine oil. Just a small amount. Oh, it's a bit too much, actually. Never mind, we can always wash it down with... Uh, looks like this thing broke. Anyway, never mind. 
I'm not too worried about the dial string. I'm sure I can get that sorted. Okay, that's turning nicely. Well, not nicely, it's turning. I think all the grease that's dried is inside this shaft over here. When I uh, spray it with WD-40, I then afterwards spray it with um, isopropyl alcohol, just get rid of the excess grease. But the WD-40 certainly helps it to start moving. Breaks down the dried gunk in there. Okay, well that looks like it's done. But this one's definitely gone, it's broken. Oh well, can't get lucky all the time, can you? Now the reason I was a little bit more careful than usual here is that um, if there was something in there if this wasn't just the grease, it could have uh, bent the plates of the uh, tuning condenser. And that would have been really bad news for this whole front end. Okay, this is still going to take a while. You just got to keep at it and I'll probably leave it overnight. Let it soak and get back to it again. WD-40 works well, but it takes a little while to sort of pull itself in by capillary action and then it starts working, doing its magic. Okay, I'm happy with that. Much better. I'll show you the result when I've got this thing completely freed up. I've left this overnight. I left it on its side just as it is here so that things would run down. Look at this. You remember how tight it was? This is so smooth. Perfect. Now all I need to do is clean out the excess uh, WD-40 uh, with uh, isopropyl alcohol. I'll use my uh, compressor for that. And then I will drop a few drops of oil just where it needs it. Okay. And we're done. Let that dry and then I will just drop a little bit of machine oil just where it needs it. And I think that is done. I also think I'm going to try and wind the, um, the dial cord on here, the new one, with the lid off because it'll be easier to see the back. Hopefully it'll go well. You're probably aware by now that this is not my favorite task, but anyway, what I've done is I've, um, I have what I have closed this capacitor, the tuning capacitor to the max. I have removed that little clip. See these things come with a little um, little sort of plate, it's brass, and you just pinch it when you've got it the right size. I removed it from the other side. I've put it around one of my new cords and now I'm going to start winding it according to the drawing. So I've taped it to about here, which I think is about where it is because this thing at the, um, when it's fully closed, it'll be at the lowest frequency. And that seems to be about there at that end, lowest frequency, highest frequency. So that should be about there. So the spring will go about here. So I'll get, just tighten that with some tape around here. And now I'm going to start. Now, where does this go? First place it goes to is this one over here. It goes around here and then around that one over there. So. It's got to go through here. Just get it in the general direction first. Remember, this is just the FM one. I've cut the string. It says 1 meter 20. I've cut it to about 1.2 meters. Oh, come on. 
wrong side went round that edge. Okay, here we go again. Try again. One of you actually said you really enjoy this. Oy, I don't know how, but take my hat off to you. So I'll leave it just in the general direction there and just try and clasp it with some tape, just lightly. The moment I'm not putting any pressure on. And then what it does is it goes around there and it goes on the underside of the cabinet. Does it? Yeah, it does. And it goes all the way to the to the spindle over here, the inner one. There's actually another pulley somewhere here. You can just see it down there. Then it goes down there and it'll go around about twice, I think, and then it'll come up to, to that. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to have to turn this on its side. So what I'm going to try and do is push this thing on the underside to that pulley and down. I really should have done this with that front off. Now I may still have to do it that way, but I'm going to give it a try. Okay, I've got it to this side. Now I've got to hook it around that pulley at the top there. Hmm. Seem to have got it on both. Brilliant. Yeah, it's on both. Try and pinch it there. I should use that blue tack. It's probably better, but Let's see if I can get away with this. Damn it, it's got to go underneath. Oh, hey. ah, put it over the top, it's over the bottom. This is not working. I'll try with some solder wire. Sometimes you can just get it through and then grab it at this end. And it sometimes works. Oh. This is on this side now. It's on the right spot. Okay. So I'll break this guy here, tie this end to it. Hopefully I can use the solder as a guide to pull it through. Let's try. this bloody resistor again. Uh, well, that's going to be easier to resolder than to take that out. So I've got to remember this resistor has got to be resoldered. And I've got it around the pulley. Okay, can't put too much tension on it because it's being held by that switch there with a bit of tape. But it looks like I've got it going around this pulley, that pulley, and that pulley. Now it's got to come down, go around here. Which way? Which way around? Now, according to the drawing, it goes around there from the bottom. So looking from the front, Counterclockwise, I'm going to give it, what, one and a half turns, so it's about two turns. That is usually what we need. I may have to correct that later. <laughs> this is so difficult to do when you're trying to film it. It's really difficult. Yeah, 
as one and I think it'll just go is it another one I have no idea is it another one or another two it doesn't actually tell us how many turns But I would imagine two full turns might be too much, but we'll see. And then it'll go up. So I'm going to try and get this through that hole so I can start pulling it at the top there. No, that's too much. That's going to get stuck. It's less one turn. Now I will remove this guy from here, keeping it sort of taut. Uh, slipped from the top there. Okay. And it goes around one goes through and then one, two. Okay, let's try that. Can always loosen that. One and it goes in there. This is what you need to do a no swearing challenge. If you can get this without swearing, you're good. Okay, sort of there. And then it goes round twice. One. Two. You know what? This bloody thing's too short. Ah, oh, cracky. Just loosen this here. Save every bit that I've got. Okay, then this goes down here. And it's got to go down here. Catch this here. There's no way this thing's going to hold. There must be another one somewhere. Oh, there is. Yeah, there's another one back there. Okay. Okay, <laughs> have I got it? Now what I'll do is I'm going to test this, right? So I can take that off. I can take that off. Now I'm going to hold these two together. Sort of pass this one through that one. I won't put the spring in yet. I just want to hold them together. And sort of test it. Ah, it kind of works, but is it going the right way? That's the question. I think it is, and then I can always adjust that there. So I'm going to 
put this guy back. Can't lose this guy. Can't lose it. Can't lose it. Can't lose it. Now, I'll thread this through that little thingy. Like that. That's where the spring's going to go. And I can pinch it. Hopefully it'll hold. Okay. Spring goes in there. Okay. Let me pull this guy across a bit more. Okay, that'll do for that. And now I've got to put the... I'm going to put this inside here. How have they done this? They've just used some glue. I'm sure I can force this out. Yeah, after all I've done, this is not going to stop me. <laughs> Maybe it will. There we go. Okay. I'll have to clean that out. I can actually just use a bit of heat shrink. This thing is far too tight to go around here and still have the string go through it. So it'll have to be some heat shrink and I have to remember to put the heat shrink now or I'll never get it in. Yep, that should do it. So I'll now pass this through here. Leave it up here for future use. And now I've got to see where to put this guy. Got to be around here. I'm just going to tie a knot on here. Guess I never went to Club Cub Scouts. This is going to work. I'm not going to finish that off because I've got a bit of this string, this one, stuck in the middle of that one. So I'm going to have to take it off and then I'll see how that goes and then I'll decide whether I need to loosen. I could then adjust the position of that because these things come off so I can put it in the right position. And then I will put the, um, the pointer in place. Okay. A lot easier to do without the camera on. Let me try that. Okay, I've got that on. I'm going to say temporarily because I can still slide this a bit left and right. But what I had to do is I had to move that a little bit. And what I did is I broke the uh, seals on the paint on these two screws. You put that to the end and then you literally force it, not force it. These screws are loose so it slides. You get it to the position you want and then you tighten them again. And I can do that later as well if I like. So if I don't get this thing aligned properly, as long as I've got the extents right, I can always just adjust it there. And that's my FM done. It works. Well, the FM align, the FM tuning uh, dial works. The dial goes all the way to the end. Not sure exactly where the end is here, but again, I can always adjust it. I think it's a little bit too far to the right. But as I said, this can still move. It's not absolutely sealed. And I can also adjust it at the top there. But now my tuning condenser is turning nicely. And I've got that problem solved. Next, I'm going to have to do this one. And this one, I think, is a lot easier. <laughs> I hope. It's easier because I think it's on the outside. It doesn't go through all that rigmarole on the inside, uh, under the chassis. I'm not sure. I'll just have to look at the drawing and get going. Okay, folks. This is done. And I have to reiterate, I hate restringing dial cords. Let me say that again. I hate 
restringing dial cords. This uh, AM section, restringing the AM section, I must have wasted about two hours on this thing. Now, I'm either useless at it or it was tough. And the one reason was I couldn't get this thing to spin properly. It wasn't stuck. I checked everything. Everything was loose. And I just had made a mistake and put two turns on here. Whereas with this string, which is some kind of fishing line somebody sent me, I needed three turns. So this went backwards and forwards and I had it in the wrong side. And I'm glad I didn't film this section because that would have really driven me crazier than, than I am already. But let me describe to you how this goes. If you look at the drawing, it's very clear. And the way to do this really is you should put it, you should close your capacitor. So the capacitor is fully meshed. Now fully meshed means highest capacitance. Highest capacitance means lowest frequency because the tank circuit formula is one over, it's, it's invert, inversely proportional to the capacitance. So the higher the capacitance, the lower the frequency, whatever band you're in. And if I look at this here, this side has got uh, 150 kilohertz on the long wave and there it's got, what is that, 350 kilohertz in the long wave. So low frequency on the side, high frequency on that side, okay? That's the first thing you've got to get sorted out. <laughs> Otherwise you go crazy because if you turn this the wrong way, well, yeah, you've seen me do that before. Next thing is you put this as close as you can to the spindle when that is fully meshed. And then it comes across here, meets the spring, meets the, uh, the pointer. Okay. This was again, I used a uh, heat shrink and uh, I've already, you know, shrunk it on because I know it's correct. String goes across here, goes through that pulley over there. And then it goes down inside to the, um, to the AM um, pulley down here on the spindle. And you have to do it three times. Now, depending on what string you use, you may get away with two. Like with that one, I used a different string. And this one was two turns and it's perfectly fine for the FM. Here I use three, three, three turns and then it comes, where does it go? Uh, then it comes back up here. Okay, so it's there, 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 around, right down the back, three turns and up here. And of course, if you don't get it exactly right, you can loosen these, uh, these screws on here and just adjust it slightly at the end. And I probably will have to adjust it again because I've been putting this on without the dial glass. But what I have done in the meantime is I've done some cleaning and you can see the result on there and you can see the result on here. This still needs a little bit of polishing on there, but I'll do that. These guys came out beautifully. What I've also done is clean the dial plate, the faceplate. And that means I can now put the faceplate on. Now the faceplate was pretty simple. It just needed a bit of polishing. Nothing too difficult. So I need to put it in there. I have put in a fresh tape on this end and on that end, because that's what touches that tape that I've put on there so it doesn't scratch. And let's see, I just need to remove that guy. This simply goes on like that. And then you've got two screws. One goes in there and one on the other side. So let's do that. Okay, we're done. Now, how are we doing alignment wise? Well, if I put it on medium wave, I need to get it to that 510. And it's just off by a smidget. I'm happy with that. If I put it on FM, it comes down just not far enough. So I have to adjust that slightly, bring it down to 87. And that should be good. Let me do that. I'll have to work on this a little bit more. I just need to twitch more. I think this thing is spinning inside. I haven't loosened this enough, but let me get that sorted and get back to you. I'm testing the EF89 on the, uh, with the Funker settings, 200 volts on the B+, plus, B1+, plus, the uh, screen grid at 60, and I'm getting 9 milliamps, and according to their chart, I should get more than 5 milliamps for a good tube. So this one is good. And with the typical operating conditions, at 170 and 100, at minus one, I should get 12 milliamps or more.
and I'm getting 12.3. So this tube is pretty good. That's the EF89. Now I'm doing the ECH81 triode. That's what I've got set there. And I should get greater than 3.6 milliamps. Well and good. Okay, let's try the heptode. For that, I need 200 on here. 60 on there. And I need greater than 3.8 at zero. Yep. This is pretty good. This tube seems to be perfectly fine. That's the ECH81 done. I tested the other characteristics of the ECH81 and the EF89, and they're all very, very good. In other words, the S and the Mu and all that stuff. And I'm actually quite keen to get this thing going because I want to see, this is before doing any changes inside for the AM section. I just want to see if it receives. It should do because now the audio is fixed. Not very clear, it's a little bit muffled. Let's try short wave. Not very good, is it? Whoa. I'm going to have to clean that socket properly because this thing is definitely not seated well. And there's obviously capacity issues because the sensitivity here is pretty poor. I should be getting a lot more obvious reception on medium wave with my mini whip at this time of day. It is late morning, so I don't expect the best. Okay, the AM is actually working. It needs the capacitors, few capacitors changed. I've got a feeling the um, we've probably got a problem with the uh, AGC cap because sensitivity is very low and the AGC cap could uh, mess that up. Uh, what else have we got? We've got some dirty uh, tube sockets that I've got to re-clean. And as soon as I've got the um, yeah, as soon as I've got the AM section done, I'll show you the results. I'll also do it a bit later in the day because that's when AM really comes up. So let me get onto it. Now to clean this stuff, all I use is a bit of isopropyl alcohol on one of these um, tooth cleaners. See that? Nothing special. You can use those cigar or pipe cleaners as well. That was the original method. But this does a pretty good job. Now, it's a little bit tedious, you just got to go through all of them. No getting around it.
I want to show you the difference a few capacitors make. This is Canary Islands. That's amazing. And watch shortwave. Facebook, notre page RFI Echo. Bonne journée, bonne soirée. Pretty amazing, right? I want to show you something else. I put it on medium wave. I think you can sort of hear a hum there. And I got a bit worried because I thought it was. Um, Try, try somewhere else. Well, it's not doing it now. I was getting some hum. I was getting a sort of a hum, and I thought it might be the output stage or the, the filtering. And then I took a crocodile clip and I connected the ground of the chassis to the ground of the scope, which is the mains earth, and it just disappeared. It was only happening on medium wave. And then I tried on short wave, it was gone, long wave, it was gone. Then I took the plug and I took it out of the uh, isolation transformer, put it into the mains and it was gone. So this has to do with noise pickup on the, um, on the bench. I think the, maybe the isolation transformer is near something that's making some noise. But the point is, sometimes you have to try these things. You know, connect the chassis to ground. This thing's got a two wire cord, so it's not mains earthed. Hey, we could change that, but I want to keep it original. And, um, you know, you sometimes have to try that sort of thing. If that didn't work, I'd probably change the, the cord. Now, when I said, look what a difference a few capacitors make, let me show you what I mean. Here we have the schematic again. And you can see I've done some checking of the mains or the B plus supplies and so on and so forth. Now, all these had been replaced before. And all I did is I went in and I went to all the uh, bad caps and replaced them. One, two, that's a 47, that's the AGC cap. And where are the other ones? There's another one down here, three. This one's right at the front end. Oh, and there's one down here. One, two, three, four, five caps. That's all it took. And it's all back, plus a few hours in the day, because obviously in the evening, it makes things a lot easier. I don't know if you can hear that. We're actually getting a lot of rain out here. There's a storm going. Unusual for Madeira, but we deserve it as well. Anyway, that's what I'm going to leave it for now. Um, next video, I'm going to come in and do the alignment, probably explain a little bit about how that works. I want to do the alignment in various ways. Somebody asked me to do it with the simplest method possible. In other words, just a, a voltmeter, or rather a VTVM, uh, and a um, simple signal generator. I want to show you a few ways of doing the, the AMIF alignment. There are many ways. If you know what you're doing, if you know why you're doing certain things, it makes life a hell of a lot easier. So I'm going to leave it for now. Thank you for your company. Hope you've enjoyed that. And if you have, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so on Patreon or on PayPal. Links are in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.